Hi guys, Chris here from High Island DIY. This is episode 3 of the top 5 SKS mods video series. Today we're going to be putting the Tapco stock on, removing the bayonet, and also the sling. So let's get started. We're going to start by removing the sling off the old stock. There's two flat screws, one on each side for the rear of it. And for the front, there's just a clip. To remove the bayonet, we need to take out this flat screw in the front. Sometimes you'll find that on the opposite side, there's a few small welds holding the screw in place. If that's the case, take a small drill bit and drill just off to the side of the screw on those welds to break them loose. Or you can take a small grinding wheel like on a Dremel grind away those welds enough where you can turn that screw out luckily there's no welds on this one so we'll be able to take the screw out there is a spring inside the handle of the bayonet so you need to pull that Hold that depressed while you pull it out and then it'll come apart. And I suggest saving all the pieces that you remove from your rifle in case you ever want to put it back into its original stock. Next we're going to remove the trigger group from the stock, the small detent on the back, depress that, pull up on your trigger guard guard and that pops right out set this aside now your stock uh, underneath the trigger group in the back there's a small spring right here take that out put that with our trigger group so we don't lose that okay now the stock just lifts right off the top of the receiver we can take our cleaning rod out so that's out of the way when you have your weapon apart this far it's a good time to stop and clean it now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the gas tube and wood handguard and how you do that is on this side of the firearm There's a small lever on the side of the sight and that needs to be slid up but not vertical just like that there's a small groove where it rides in and it'll stop right there don't lift it any higher because there's a spring loaded piece inside here and if you move it straight up and then lift out this the piece will come shooting out so make sure you stop right there and then this just lifts straight up comes off the front your gas piston is inside here set that aside with your trigger group this back metal cap here comes off and we have to take that off in order to put on the new piece it's held on by a pin that goes through here sometimes the outline of the pin can be re really hard to see so you need to take some sandpaper and just sand it lightly on both sides until you can see the outline of the head of the pin okay I can see the pin I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera near the top up here one side of the pin is larger than the other side so you need to make sure you find which side is smaller and tap it tap the smaller side otherwise you're not going to be able to get this pin out and I'm going to put this in the vise I have the gas tube assembly in my vise very lightly. I don't want to bend it or anything. I just want to hold it while I tap this pin out.
So there I just split the wood. But that's okay because I don't want to put this back in the original sock. I, the only thing I don't want to damage is the gas tube itself. So if you want to save the top wood floor end piece for your gas tube, you need to be extremely careful getting this pin out. Otherwise you can purchase a standalone piece from Tapco that is a gas tube and the plastic floor end already installed on it. There, moved finally. Here's the pin. Now we should be able just to wiggle this metal cap off the end. Like that. The wood comes right off. I'm going to take this time to clean up all this nasty stuff. It looks like rust and moisture that was underneath the wood on here. Okay, cleaned it up. Now we're going to open up the Tapco package with the stock in it and see what all parts it comes with. This is what comes in the kit from Tapco for the new stock. You get your upper four grip piece that goes on your gas tube, your pistol grip, the main stock, the butt stock, and the hardware it includes is the new spring to go beneath the trigger group, the two bolts to hold your butt stock onto the main stock and then two small rivet pins when you put this in place so you don't have to reuse the original pins so we're going to put this on first since that was the hardest part to take off we'll start with that because you might have to remove some of the material around here to get it to fit correctly and if you look inside it is labeled front and rear So we'll see how much we're going to have to take off of here. I don't think we actually have to take any off. It kind of snapped into place. Fits nice and snug. So we'll see how the rear cap fits on. We might not have to remove any material at all. Right there it looks like it's perfect. It looks like I can get the pin right back through the hole. Didn't have to do any filing or shaping. This is the replacement pin or rivet that they supplied. They sent two, they're the exact same length. You can see right there. And it sticks out a little bit on the other side. You're supposed to put it in a vise and flatten that out so it's flat on both sides and then remove any excess material with a file so that it fits back into the uh, other end of the gas tube on the receiver of the firearm. We've got the rivet in place now we're going to put it in the vise and this needs to be completely flat. The only thing is we don't want to squish the end of the gas tube where our gas piston is not going to be able to fit back in. So just keep that in mind when you're flattening it out. Don't put too much pressure on it. You just want to squish that rivet and it should be fairly soft metal. Okay, that squished really easily. You can see it down here. That's flush with this side, flattened out. And here's the other end. A little bit uh, sticking out we might have to file a little bit off of that so it slides back into the weapon but that was really easy to get installed didn't have to do any filing or fitting didn't have to remove any of the polymer material it slid right on we were able to put the pin in no problems at all thumbs up for Tapco now I'm gonna remove the excess material on the one side of the rivet I have a small file here this is actually a chainsaw raker guide file nice fine small metalwork file just gonna file that down smooth till it's even with the rest of the piece it's 
see how it fits into the receiver. This is where it's going to fit down into. Put the front in. See if it slides down in. It does slide right down into place. So we've got the head of that rivet filed even with the rest of it. So now we can put our gas piston back in. Goes in just like this. It only goes in one way. You cannot put it in this way. The hole is too small. Slides in. We can put this back on. Put it on the gas port on the front. And then it fits right back into here. Pops down into place. And then we can flip this lever back down to its original position. That locks that into place. I thought that was going to be the hardest part. That wasn't bad at all. Now we're going to put the main stock body on. This too could require some sanding or so that your receiver fits in. And that looks like I'm definitely going to have to do some trimming for this to fit. The front fits in fine, but the back is nowhere cl even close to fitting down in. So I'm going to have to file some along here to get that to drop into place. I'm going to take a marker and mark on the stock where my receiver is hitting so I know where I need to file. So I only take off material that I absolutely have to. I think I'm actually going to use a Dremel for this just to make it go quicker. Take and clean it up with a file. Because the Dremel is not that neat of a tool, especially now with polymer. kind of starts to melt it a little bit. Okay, let's see if the receiver will fit in now. Here's the barrel and receiver laying upside down. See if the stock fits on. Slide it into place in the front. Push it on. I think it's all the way in. Looks like it's seated right up to where it's supposed to be. Now that we have the barrel and receiver into the stock, we're going to put the trigger group back in. They do provide a new spring to go under the trigger group. This is the new one. It's a little bit longer than your old one. That fits into the hole right at the back of the cutout for the trigger group. It's supposed to fit in anyway. I don't know why they wouldn't have that hole drilled big enough where the spring will drop freely in there. I don't like that at all. There's no way I'm going to be able to get that trigger group in there. I guess I'm going to have to drill that out so the spring fits in. Okay, so I have a drill bit that the, the correct size so that the spring will drop down in but not move around at all. It's 17 64ths. I don't know what that works out to be metric or anything. You'll have to figure that out if you need it. I'm just going to carefully and slowly drill this hole just a little bit bigger. Okay, so we've got it so the spring goes in. It doesn't drop in. You still have to push it in, but it actually goes down to the bottom of the hole. Next step is to put the trigger group into place. Same procedure as with the original stock. These two ears on the side of the pin, they hook up into the receiver. Push down firmly. Okay, it doesn't lock in, which means the receiver isn't quite far enough down into the stock. So we might have to do a little more fitting just to get it to drop in. If you can see right there, that lever, there's maybe a sixteenth of an inch before that lever hits the top of the stock. I'm guessing we need to get the receiver in so that lever is up against the edge of the new stock. 
So the receiver does not fit far enough down into the stock for us to put the trigger group in. So we're going to take it back out. We're going to have to remove a little bit of the material. On the back right here, there's a step. We're going to have to file this down a little bit so the receiver drops in far enough. Take the Dremel, slowly remove material. Test fit the receiver into the stock again. See if the trigger group will fit in. Click into place. <clears throat> Looks like it clicked into place. Next step, we'll be putting the pistol grip in. To install the pistol grip, they provide a bolt. It is 3 eighths. It's got a nut driver here. You need to open the bottom to give you access. Drop the bolt in. Simply tighten it in. It's slightly difficult to tighten in just because it's uh, going into a polymer receiver or a polymer stock and there's no threads so the bolt is cutting its own threads. So careful not to over tighten it. You want it nice and snug, but if you torque on it too hard, you could potentially strip out the hole in the stock. So we've got it good and tight. Close that up. The only thing left to do is to put the collapsible butt stock on it. They provide two bolts and two nuts. On the left side of the weapon opposite the charging handle, there's a space in the stock for the nuts to fit down into. We slide our butt stock in. Give it a little tap. Until the holes line up. Then from the other side, we'll put the screws in. Make sure they're nice and snug. You don't want them coming loose after a few shots. Overall, I'd say the installation was pretty simple of the stock. Uh, very little fitting, very little material needing to be removed. Uh, I'm going to test fit a mag. Alright, we're going to test fit some mags here. This is a 30 round pol polymer magazine from ProMag. Fits in really nice and smooth. Rocks a little bit forward and back none side to side this is a 30 round blue steel mag from pro mag that locks in as well that one wobbles side to side and front to back quite a bit side to side so i don't know how reliable that's going to be uh, well, i will do a video testing these two 30 round mags head to head so look forward to that coming on the channel soon okay that's going to do it for this episode of the top five sks mods we got the stock installed bayonet removed and uh test fitted for magazines seems good with the polymer a little loose with the steel mag uh next episode we're going to be doing the top free mag modification to the bolt and we're going to be installing a muzzle brake so as always, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.